mess. I challenge you to come and see if this isn't real. I challenge you to come and bring those that are sick and afflicted and watch God do it. It's not me. It's not the people in here. It's the environment of Christ being in our midst. He's the healer. And there's nothing impossible with God if you can just believe it. Sometimes when I'm weary, Satan wars with my soul to get my mind off of the cross. And I start fighting battles, Christ has already won in a war. Satan's already lost. Oh, if I hold fast to the foot of the cross, I'll be caught in its light, cleansing flood. If I stay. in for some friends of ours. Um, we've had two suicides, not in our family, but friends that have taken their lives. Um, I got a message this morning from a man that um, his throat, his airway is closing up on him and he has a knot that's forming in his uh, throat and for my granddaughter-in-law. When I was in El Salvador, John, can you remember how many people that had knots in their throat that, that we prayed for? At least. Put your hand up here. Put your hand up there. What's his name? Virgil. Father, we send the word to Virgil right now. And God, I curse this growth that's in his throat. That his valve be open that he's able to swallow. I rebuke this in Jesus' mighty name by the authority of God's word. We send the word to these families that have lost a loved one by suicide. Satan, I command you to loose your hold and remove that spirit out of that family's homes. Let them be free. In the name of Jesus Christ, for thy glory, I call it done. Oki ando rosa bakichi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He will be okay. Anyone else? Mary, you told me your granddaughter is going to New York to be on a Broadway play, and she's how old? 14 years old. She's going to be by herself with none of the family to be with her, but she shall be okay. No harm shall come near her. You hear me? So fret not, nor worry not. <clears throat> you knew I was coming here, didn't you? 
Huh? Come on up here. This is my best part. This is what I like doing best. Do I know you? No. Have I spoke to you before? No. So if I know anything about you, it would have to be either Rochelle told me or God. Yes. How old are you, sir? I just turned 47. 47. And what do you do for a living? I'm a driver. driver. Do you remember when you was in your mid-20s that somebody told you that the hand of God was on you? Yes. Did you know that you've been running from God since then? Yes. Are you ready to quit running? Uh, yes. <laughs> that was a that was a slow uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was slow, wasn't it? Brother, you got many talents, many abilities, but the best one is your heart. You have a good heart. And you get hurt very, very, very easy because you love from within. And God's going to make a major, huge, major change in your life. You will never be the same after you leave this place today. Whether you ever come back here or not, you will never be the same. That is thus saith the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, you didn't tell me nothing about him, did you, sis? But you already knew a long time ago that he's been running from God and the hand of God is on him. And the funny part about it is, it was who she's been talking about that put you on the altar. Your mother. You hear me? And what's your name? Lee. Lee. Lee? Yes. Do you believe that, sir? Do you believe what I just told him? Do you believe it, ma'am? Slip up your hands, brother. That's Methodist. See, Methodists catch blessings here. Presbyterians get it here. Church of God gets it here. Somebody God gets it here. You got to reach up and get your blessing. <laughs> Ain't that right? You got to reach up and grab it, baby. Oh, well. Get him a card and a hanky. You're in for a ride, brother. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to touch this brother from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for a double portion of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know that while you're driving this truck that God can take you into a truck stop or wherever you're driving that truck and you can be the most powerful preacher on a one-on-one? -on -one? You don't have to have a crowd, brother. All you got to do is speak the word and God will perform it because you're going to see miracles with your own eyes that you never, ever, ever imagined. That's the reason why God has called you and ordained you and he's going to make you a powerful spokesman for the Lord. Powerful. Card. I want you to take this card and I want you to put your name on here. And I want you to tape this in your bathroom. And here's what it says. I, I'll just use my name, Bob Frary am anointed to be blessed and prosper and highly favored of the Lord. All you'll do is put your name, Lee. Okay? 
every morning when you go into that bathroom, you take this oil and you anoint yourself. Anoint your truck before you hit the road. Harold, am I telling you the truth? There's a truck truck driver back there. He does all kinds of driving. He can tell you, he can stand here for an hour and tell you how God spared his life in that truck. He anoints his truck every day before he leaves his house. Those two things. Then I want you to take this hanky and I want you to put before in other words, present, future. And then on the other side, I want you to put the past. Starting this very day, every time God does something for you in the future, you write it down. Every time God reminds you of how He spared your life or blessed you in the past, you write that on the back. And before Christmas gets here, you'll have to come back and get another hanky. You hear me? And if nobody told you today they love you, I do. Ma'am, may I pray for you? Come here. If I was to have to put a, a name with you, it would be joyous. Because you are full of joy. And God loves you in a special way. I don't know you from Adam, but I know your spirit. I can read you. And I know that you love God with your whole heart. You have been through a whole bunch of stuff in your life. And how you can stand here right now in front of me and have a smile, I don't know. But it has to be God in you. You hear me? What is your name, honey? Minister Helen Campbell. Helen Campbell. How would you like to come some, some day and minister? I would love to. Well, I'd love to have you. You hear me? And I want you to know something. If nobody told you today they love you, did you tell her? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> you better be defensive there. <laughs> Boy, he can right now. Since he told you he loved you, I do too. <laughs> okay. I want you to slip up your hands, honey. That's um a little bit better than Methodist. That's probably Presbyterian. We got to reach up for your blessing. There you go. Have you been to the doctor lately? Not lately. Not lately. Not in the last two months. Three months. And what did you go for? Ah, uh, my knees. Your knees. Mm -hmm. Did you have surgery on them? Not at that time. But back years ago. Years ago. Are they planning on doing any surgery on them again? I said no. You said no. You said right. <laughs> Give me two chairs. What actually did they do to your knees? Um, I had a knee replacement, and when they did that, I just had to tell you, I broke it. And so they had to replace it. And I never got the motion back in it. So my doctor sent me to a specialist to see, and they did the x-rays and everything. What he would have to do is go back in, cut it, 
but it would be anywhere, he said, from six months or so before I would be able to walk and whatnot. But they couldn't guarantee that I wouldn't have the same problem, so my, my answer was no. Do you know something that when God heals you, whatever God reveals, God heals. And I want to tell you of something that I saw with my own eyes. See, I love 45 years of seeing nothing but miracles and services. It just amazes me how God allows these eyes to see it. But there was a police officer down in Greenwood, South Carolina, that he had had surgery on his wrist and he couldn't bend it. It was frozen. And he'd been in pain for two years. So my pastor turned around and called him out. And the guy was slow to get up and he said, hurry up and get up. And he said, I ain't got time to play around. And he said, you drag your feet. You know, he's real bold and strict. So he gets up there. So he had this blessed water, miracle water from the well up in Delaware, Reverend Jenkins. And he poured the water on his wrist. He said, now you're going to be shocked. But he said, bend your hand. And he went like this and the guy's eyes got as big as the quarters and he started doing this and he couldn't get over it. So the next night he comes back, he said, now I want to complete what's going on. Come down here again. He said, God shows me that little hole in the top of your hand. I see something down in that hole that needs to come out. And he poured some more water on it. And all of a sudden, a screw about that big came out of his wrist that had infected his whole wrist for two years. And that man was just bawling like a baby. The damage that they have done, I need two bottles of that water. I'm going to pray over this water. It's already been prayed over. But I want you to take a little bit of it each day and pour a little bit over your knees. And don't be surprised if things start working out the way they're supposed to. And people said, well, what if God don't? Well, what if God does? Huh? Huh? I look at the other side. God said all things are possible to him that believes. I got it up there on the wall. <laughs> Father, I ask that you anoint this water as a point of contact and do that creative miracle in her knees. Restore it without no surgery, even if she has to go back to the doctor, have them doctors blown away from what's taken place. I ask it to be done in Jesus' name. Would you hold that for me? Let your healing virtue, Father, go through these kneecaps. In every nerve and every joint, let it be restored. So that when she comes back here to preach, she can do that dance. You know what dance I'm talking about, brother? She knows how to dance. <laughs> Am I right? All right. I'm right now. <laughs> and if nobody told you today they love you, I do. I mean that. Okay? Okay, you may stand up. some issues burdens that was being released into the spiritual realm that God's going to take care for you and you're going to flourish God's got you on the back burner but he's setting you right on the front burner now you're going to see things that you have never never seen God has got you ready to go forth like you have never been before 
the next time that God lets you preach, you're going to be amazed how it just rolls, just constant flowing. Do you hear what I'm saying? And please keep me in your prayers. Love you, honey. I want you to put your hand right here. And I ask God to touch you. And I'm going to pray that God touches your arteries. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, honey. Brother, you're blessed to have this woman in your life. You are truly blessed. While she was speaking in tongues, the Lord was dealing with me to pray for you, young lady. What's your name? Marquita. Marquita. That's a pretty name. And how old are you? 24. And what do you do for a living? I work at a warehouse. Is that hard work? Do you want to do something for the Lord? What would you like to do? I would like to help other people. That's a gift. Helps. Gift. Are you married? No. Do you have a boyfriend? Okay. What I saw was that God was going to put you with a ministry and that you were going to be able to we call minister to children and help them understand the Bible. But he's also going to educate you at the same time you're ministering, taking you into a deeper realm of the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Raise your hands, please. There you go. <laughs> you learned, didn't you? I'm asking the Lord to touch you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' mighty name, let your Shekinah glory empower her and give that desire of her heart to be able to help. Give her that gift along with a double portion of your anointing. In Jesus' mighty name, let it be. I call it done. Do you believe that, honey? What are you crying for? <laughs> you feel good? Can I pray for you? Come on. I like that shirt. Brother, what's your name? Uh, Stephen. 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 And what do you do for a living? I work in a garage. Garage. And what church do you go to? Uh, well, I've gone to a couple of churches, but... Uh, I go to uh, uh, First Church of God, Refuge. Refuge. That's better than the second. 
joke. Have you been to the doctor lately? Uh, yeah. Uh, high blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, lose weight. Yeah, yeah. Are you trying? Uh, I've been trying. Yeah. If I give you a diet, put you on a diet, will you do it? You will. You got to stick to it. And I'm telling you, if you do, it'll it'll go like this and it'll drop just like this. It's called a no white diet. No sugar. No white flour. No white potatoes. No white rice. No milk or white products. No pizza. Okay. And I promise you, you weigh yourself today and you start on this diet. I had a, a woman in my church over on Williams lost 150 some pounds, 154, 157, I forget. I had another woman that lost 120 something. I had another one lost 65. I had another one lost 83 by doing this right here. I lost 50. Huh? I lost 50. He's lost 50 already. If you'll do that, okay? It's important because it'll save your life. If I could illustrate something so you understand, bring me that vase right there, the white one. How much do you weigh now? Uh, 272. 272. I weighed 278, and I'm now full this. Imagine you're carrying that around all day. Your extra weight that you have on your body is putting a strain on the heart. And that's what happens. The more of this you lose, the weight, the better the heart works and re relaxes. You understand what I'm saying? Stephen, raise your hands. Father, I ask God that you touch my brother from the top of his head, God, to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, for thy glory. I feel led to pray for your kidneys, too. I call it done in Jesus' name. You hear me?